You know what I really liked about this book? is the fact that I felt validated. In this video, I'm going to talk about the lessons I learned from this book and everything is going to be timestamped so you can just skip to the section that most interests you. What's up guys? How's it going? Aura Pampa here and today I'm going to bring you a review of a book I just listened to and it's amazing. It's basically called How to Get Better at Almost Everything by Pat Flynn. Now, you don't want to confuse two Pat Flynn's. There's the Pat Flynn of Smart Passive Income podcast, not that Pat Flynn. There's Kettlebell Pat Flynn. This Pat Flynn is the one who wrote this. Funny enough, I actually learned about the book when I listened to a podcast that both Pat Flynn's had with each other on the Smart Passive Income podcast. And so I thought I'd, you know, just have a listen. And so anyway, after that podcast, I thought, oh, let me go listen to this. And wow, this book was a treasure trove of knowledge. I think I definitely recommend you having a listen. Okay, I thought I'd change the lighting a little bit just to kind of give a different look. What do you think about it? Okay, let's go ahead. So this book is about how generalism is the way forward rather than specialism. So the author, Pat Flynn, makes a case for building up skills in different areas that could actually be complementary for you. So many people who we know as great and we celebrate as great today, even if we celebrate them for particular specialisms, many of them were actually generalists. Take Mark Twain, for example. He was a very well-known author in the United States. However, he was more than an author. He was also a stand-up comedian. He was also a scientist, an engineer. He did a lot of other things that many people may not necessarily have known, but definitely enriched his storytelling ability because he then had different perspectives and different things he could draw upon to write his stories and entertain people. And a key point in thinking about being a generalist is skill stacking. So taking all these different skills and then joining them together and using them very well. I'll tell you a bit about my generalist story and my skill stacking story towards the end of the video. For now, let's carry on. When we think about freedom and human freedom, we often think about freedom in terms of free will, so being able to do what you want, but there's a different kind of freedom. Actually, Pat Flynn talks about two kinds of freedom. One is the freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want, how you want, and the other is discipline. Now, discipline being a form of freedom is a bit unusual, but let me explain. Basically, discipline involves you limiting yourself in some things in order to give you the freedom to do other things. So let's say you wanna be amazing at playing guitar, right? But without learning how to play the guitar and taking the discipline to learn and foregoing other things you could have been doing in that time, like taking account of the opportunity cost and letting go of those things, but actually focusing on playing the guitar and practicing. Um, that's the only way you're going to have the freedom to be able to actually play guitar very well. You have to deny yourself some things in order to get what you're aiming for. That's the second kind of freedom he talks about. Another concept the author talks about in this book is isolation and integration. And he always says integration over isolation. But let me explain what he means by that. Let's say, again, you're a guitar player, right? You want to learn how to play, ooh, let me think, maybe a pop song, okay? A particular pop song. And you want to learn the chords. And you know that maybe the chords C, G, and A minor are required to play this song. Rather than going about learning every single chord you can learn in guitar. It would actually be better to focus on the chords you need to play that song. You would then be able to see the progress you're able to make. It's more beneficial to learn to play those particular chords rather than just learn in theory all the chords you could potentially play on guitar because what's really useful to you is those few chords that you're going to need to play those songs. And in reality, many things in life are down to a few things. So even with music, a lot of pop songs rely on just a few chords as opposed to a wide plethora of, of chords. So the important thing is if you're looking to learn how to play guitar or something specific, what you need to do is be specific in what you're trying to learn. So are you learning because you want to be a um, guitar player? Is it that you want to accompany people on particular songs? Is it that you want to write your own songs? Once you figure out what it is, they need to figure out the smaller pieces that you need to get you to that point. That figuring out of, of those smaller pieces is called isolation. So isolating the bits that you need. And once you've isolated them, you've gotten those skills, bring them back together to make the song that you wanted to play, to play the song that you wanted to play earlier, that bringing back of the isolated parts together is integration. Now, once you do that, you find that you're just making a lot more progress than you would have thought. And that can help you with going from zero or 10% to 80%. Now, the 100% would be learning every single potential chord you could learn on the guitar. But if what you need to actually get you to the level you want to get to is those chords, 
start with those and then you can start expanding um, as you go along but focus on the parts that you need that will get you the furthest the quickest the author also talked about meta skills um, briefly but very importantly he talked about logic so developing logic and logic is about your ability to think uh, rationally and be able to make decisions um, properly you know so he gave a list of uh, logic items that you could go research and learn a lot more about to build your skill of logic um, I'm gonna mention them here but I'm still gonna actually go in you know read up on these because I don't think I know I'm, I'm quite logical in my thinking but I don't think I know logic um, technically like he had mentioned them so I'm gonna mention a few things so in learning about logic there are a few things you want to learn about there is induction and deduction there's red herring there is genetic fallacy bandwagon thinking composition fallacy ad hominem attack false dilemma circular reasoning appealing to authority and straw man um, these are different uh, ways of perceiving something and also some pitfalls that people um, have in their arguments which can let you pinpoint the parts where the person isn't being logical or the pitfalls basically in the person's argument but yeah, that's something I'm definitely gonna go learn. He also mentioned quite a few other books that I thought would be really good to go research for logic. He recommended um, reading a book called Come Let Us Reason, An Introduction to Logical Thinking by Dr. Norman L. Geiser and Ronald M. Brooks. Now, another thing he advocates for is 80%. 80% of a skill. So imagine if a specialist decided to go 100%, right? Instead of going 100%, once you get to about 80% of the skill, that's about the time to stop. You start experiencing diminishing returns about that point. Now, it's not an exact science. It's not that you can measure it to exactly 80% and decide, okay, this is 80%, so I'm gonna stop. But it's, it's the general principle or the idea of it that you should take in mind, not necessarily the exact number. What that then means is that um, even 80%, by the way, is better than most people will ever be in that particular skill. Okay, and then you can just get to that level and then move on to the other parts or other skills you want to learn. That way you have many skills that you can build up. Another thing he talks about is specialization for short periods of time. What does that mean? When you're trying to learn a new skill, rather than looking at learning multiple new skills at the same time, instead what you do is that you focus on one or two particular skills that you want to learn in that time preferably even one and then give yourself time to practice those things allocate maybe 30 minutes a day an hour a day to that skill and then just go hard on it and before you know it you'll start to realize that once you've taken that big skill broken it down into the isolated parts worked on those isolated parts and then bring those isolated parts back into the whole in integrating it you'll find that you're naturally building up the skill the author also spoke about motivation and how a contrarian view to motivation is actually what pushed him to start making these differences in his life. So he was told by one of his uh, teachers to not think about the great lofty things he'd be able to do if he just put his mind to something, but actually instead think of the times when he didn't show up and he was embarrassed he couldn't show up um, and how that made him feel. After thinking of those things he was embarrassed about, it actually motivated him to go and sign up for Taekwondo and actually become better at something, so better so that he could improve his health and be more athletic so that he could also get picked uh, more often to join different sports. But wow, this book has been just something that really has inspired me, inspired me to try again at some things that I was losing faith in. For example, um, even the fact that I, I kept wondering, am I doing too much? And I think in some respects I'm doing too much, not because it's a bad thing to do, but because I'm going about it the wrong way. The better way would be um, telling myself that, look, I can do many things, but for certain periods of time, I need to focus on particular things. That way I can then build on those skills, get to a certain level, and then do other things, um, build on other skills as well. And then imagine if I'm on 80% at so many other skills, I can then combine them together and do really great things. Like, I'm super excited, guys. Get this book if you haven't listened to it already. It's an amazing book. Um, it just opened my eyes to a lot of things, and I think it might do the same for you. You know what I really liked about this book? is the fact that I felt validated. Okay, so growing up, I've always been that curious kid who was always up to something, just always figuring out how things worked, tinkering with things, you know, very curious and 
just wanting to satiate that curiosity. Um, and that led me down learning a number of skills just because I was just really curious. Why does this work this way? How can I make it work that way? That sort of thing. Now that played its part when I got into the world of work. Even before I got into the world of work, um, I learned different skills. For example, I learned audio editing from working in the multimedia department or volunteering in the multimedia department at church. And then I also learned, um, I learned, oh gosh, I learned random things. I learned um, different languages. I mean, I lived in France at one point, so that gave me the opportunity to learn French. But beyond that, I actually ended up going to learn Spanish. Now, why did I learn Spanish? I was interested in it because at some point there was someone I had a crush on who was Spanish speaking. So I thought, oh, let me learn a bit. Now, that's what I came into the language for, but I actually stayed because I realized I was actually good at it. And it, the next year when it came to the opportunity to drop the subject or continue, I was just like, well, I'm doing really well in it. Why would I quit? So that's how I, how I learned Spanish. And then that led on to me learning other things as well. So um, eventually I picked up Portuguese because I wanted to travel to Brazil. And it was really close to Spanish such that the uh, progress I'd made in Spanish made it even easier for me to learn Portuguese. So I thought, oh, why not? Why not just tack on another language, right? Borrowing hours is a term for leveraging time spent developing skills from one domain and applying it to another domain. James Altucher talked about this in his book, Skip the Line. I'll have to do a review on this book at some other time. Why not? So um, in the end, I just ended up picking up about five languages um, to different levels of, uh, of proficiency, I'd say. But still, um, I'm really grateful that I've had that opportunity. Then when it came to the world of work, I was really interested in um, Excel, uh, really random things to be interested in. Um, but as a kid, I used to see my dad doing some stuff on Excel and I was curious, what was he doing? How was it doing all these calculations? And so I used to play around. We had a computer in the house. So I used to play around with it and just figure out, figure out things, figure out how things worked. So um, with that, it then meant that I'd learned some data analysis skills. I didn't even realize it was called data analysis, but how I knew it played a part was when it came to my A-levels, the board had made um, some errors in marking my script. Somehow they'd miscalculated my, my grades and I was a bit gutted initially. I thought I didn't get the grade I expected for my math A-level. And then I had just created some Excel sheets to track my progress and how much how many more points I needed to get the A I was aiming for. And I'd accepted my fate. They gave me a, a, a grade which I wasn't happiest with. It wasn't a bad grade, but I wasn't happiest with because I was aiming for an A. And then I just decided, okay, after I'd accepted my face, just started to plug things back into the Excel sheet. And the sheet was telling me, oh, all right, you should have gotten an A. And I was like, wait, but my result says it's a B. So that actually gave me the, what do I call it, the basis to actually challenge the board and say, okay, look, I think your examiners made a mistake. They didn't give me my mark. And they actually sent me a letter of apology saying, sorry, yes, we had made an error. And um, here's your mark. You have an A in math in your math A-level, and that made it all the, all the more sweeter. But I didn't realize at the time that was data analysis. It wasn't until I got to work and a lot of things weren't going so well for me at work. But one thing one of my bosses mentioned was that a lot of things aren't going well, but this one thing, data analysis, seems to be your strong point. And I took that to heart and in the next few jobs I did, I kind of focused on there and things started going really well for me. At some point I was working as a digital marketing executive, I think the title was at the time. And I used to go over to the tech guys who were building the platform. And one of the guys there used to run um, queries from the database to get the to get the numbers that I needed to report back on marketing. But when he would send the results to me, like the Excel sheet, I would see he would put the query in. And I looked at it and I thought, that looks simple enough. It was SQL or SQL, as some people call it. And that got me thinking, I can probably learn to do that. And so just on my own, started learning a bit. And I was like, oh, I'd like to do this. In the next job I had, my boss there knew a bit more about SQL. So she showed me a few things. But because I was so interested within uh, a short period of time, I'd even surpassed and exceeded what she could teach me, uh, which felt which felt really good. She then led me on to my next job where I could then use my um, data analysis skills with Excel and SQL for, for accessing databases, but then to now create dashboards. Now, I didn't know how to create dashboards at the time, but I told, I managed to convince them to take me on anyway, because I was a quick learner and I would learn it. And then every night I would literally come home. Um, at the time, I didn't see it as discipline. It was just literally being so curious that I just wanted to learn. So I would literally come home every evening, have something to eat, and then spend probably three, four hours at a go. I wasn't even keeping track of time, just learning that skill. I bought a course on Udemy, um, 
It was by um, a company called Super Super Data Science. The guy teaching was Kirill Aramenko, and he's another um, multi hyphenate alcoholic, very very skilled in many things. Yeah, I just kept learning and built that discipline, and just I didn't even realize, like I said, that it was discipline at the time. But I just kept learning and learning. And the big payoff was when I would create stuff at work, and the team would just be so thankful. They'd be like, "Oh wow, Ora, you've really helped us." And for me, because I'd learned the skill, I didn't feel like it was anything that special. But to them, it gave them visibility on um, what they were doing and uh, what the marketing numbers were and what it meant for them in terms of actually achieving their goals so they were really happy about it and I was happy as well because I mean I was doing well at the job and I was able to provide value you know but these were skills that kind of stacked up over time but just one it wasn't just me focusing on one skill um, if I think about voiceovers, which I do now as my main business now with that like I said I mentioned earlier I at church, um, I had learned how to do audio editing because I was in the technical department or multimedia team, as it's called in some churches. And there I learned to um, edit the messages, like the audio um, from whoever was preaching at the time sort of thing. And I got so proficient with it, uh, such that when it came to doing audiobooks, one of the skills was being able to edit audio, but because I'd already done that, that wasn't something that took me time. The skill I had to focus on was more my delivery of uh, voiceovers. And yeah, so that shortened my learning process on that such that I was able to focus on the acting side of it. And yeah, I was able to do that and go into voiceovers full time like I'm doing now. But again, these are things that are stacking up. Even in learning to run a business, I the voiceover business wasn't my first business. My first business was actually working as a contractor, um, doing data analysis and data visualization for companies. In that, I learned a lot of things uh, from how to, how to do your accounting to communication skills, you know, speaking to your customer, making sure they're happy. And even when there are areas where you disagree, speaking to them to find out um, a way of resolving things amicably. Um, even skills like negotiating, you know, um, being able to ask for what you believe you deserve, not just taking taking what is given to you. Uh, there's just so, so much. But then these are skills that have stacked up over time. People could say, okay, yeah, you know, it'd be good to focus on one thing. I mean, I do languages, I do data analysis, I do voiceovers, and each thing seems quite disparate. But at the same time, I think learning all these different skills has actually helped me um, personally a, be a more interesting person to have conversations with. He just, it makes sure I'm not too bored. I think if I focused on one thing for too long, I'd get too bored. But many people say, oh, but you know, there's that saying, uh, a jack of all trades is a master of none. But actually that's not the full saying. The full saying is a, j a jack of all trades is a master of none, but much better than a master of one. So. What that tells me is that, you know what, having all these skills, I can put them together and actually create something from it and create a unique advantage that I can bring to the world. You know, so I'm really happy about that. Now, in terms of what I've learned from this book and how I'm going to apply it, well, one of the things I'm, I'm constantly learning is how to improve these videos, these YouTube videos that I put forward. Now, the different areas I need to work on. So that's me now isolating. The big goal is to become better at creating YouTube videos. The isolated bits are knowing how to write compelling titles, how to design um, eye-catching uh, thumbnails that people would want to click on, um, knowing how to structure the video such that people enjoy and actually watch all the way through, how to edit the video so that they put forward the points I'm looking to do quite visually, but also in an engaging manner, you know, um, and then also how to gain more subscribers and get monetized. There's so many things there, but rather than just, you know, um, just research and do things helter skelter. One of the things that the book recommends is that you spend less time researching and reading and watching and more time actually practicing. Spend as little time or as little as needed to be able to start doing things. Um, so spend as little time needed reading and researching to be able to get things done um, and then just spend more of your time practicing. I think that's where I need to do more. So I do practice quite a bit and I'm gonna post a video up soon of a video, it's almost like a copycat video, but a video that was inspired by somebody else I watch often and then me trying to replicate what they've done in terms of um, headings and the style of the video just to get better and better um, at the craft.
one thing that was also mentioned in the book, it was that when you're looking to get better, look at people who are already good at the skill you want to do, and then you can try emulating them. You know, innovate a little bit in what you do. So don't just take everything they do and do it copycat, word for word um, sort of thing, but actually put your own twist on it. But still study the people who have done it well, because then you can learn what they've done well. So that's something else that um, I'm looking to do uh, more of. I think for me, uh, maybe, I don't know, I might focus more on my thumbnails. I think that would give me my thumbnails and my titles. I think if I focused on those, that would give me the largest return in terms of uh, my YouTube videos. And then also learning to do a bit more research into what videos to do topics on. And for now, I haven't selected a particular niche I wanna focus on, but it's something I'm also looking to do as well over time. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you really enjoyed it, you should check out some of my other videos where I go through book summaries of um, books that have also inspired me. If you think this sort of series would be very helpful to you, leave me a comment in the comment box. It'll just let me know that you enjoyed this. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next one. And by the way, if you have gotten to the end of this video, you, are the real MVP. Go ahead and leave me a star emoji so I know you've gotten here. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, bye. And don't forget to check out the other videos, by the way. They'll appear on the screen just right here, right here. So click, 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 and uh, I'll see you soon. All right, bye.